Hey guys, this is going to be your nice and quick video. We're going to show you inner workings of a solenoid. And I happen to have a good solenoid, this little guy right here. You can see I also have this one, which is a bad solenoid. And normally this guy has other protective features like rubber cap and this dampening screw. That's a retention screw. Notice it's got a O-ring on there for dampening. So this guy is a defective solenoid and this slides off the valve body. This is the valve body right here. And it goes into a um, manifold block. This is a good solenoid. And uh, let's see, same voltage, and just handles different pressure. There are various ways to rate solenoids. It's going to be rated based on its pressure, its temperature handling. It's going to be rated based on its input voltage that activates it. So th there's a variety of things to consider if you ever have to replace these. Always try and replace them with an exact part number. Because if you don't, uh, you will run into some problems, like valve seals. All right, so let's go ahead and take out this valve body, and let's do a little quick anatomy of a failure. Because this guy, right here, it was arky sparking internally on the coil. So there is a bunch of soot inside this because it was electrically arcing right here for the valve body. There's a variety of reasons why that might be happening. I think one of the reasons is because of improper internal dampening and it creates ex excessive wear and tear due to vibration. So this right here is the valve seat and you'll have various valve seats in different solenoids based on the material uh, that is in there. And this one here might be plastic or rubber, but that is based on the operating temperature because some of these solenoids are for steam, some of them are for pressure, some of them are for vacuum. And based on the temperature and the operating frequency, like how often it's going to be activated, you'll have different materials, different durometers uh, in here at the valve seat. And in here is going to be your pilot, which is a tapered surface, which this one is brass. And you can tell by based on the wear pattern if you got a leak or blow by because it will be an uneven surface. I can take my finger on there and I can see that. It's a nice, even valve seat, and I can see that also here. Yep, nice, even contact patch. So that's a good one. I might actually clean this up a little bit, but you want to take care if you're cleaning it up to make sure that you don't damage that pilot right there, uh, because if it gets uneven wear, this guy will be absolute garbage. So these components right here are the rebuildable section of a solenoid. Now, you could change out the entire manifold and everything, but a lot of these guys for all different types of medical equipment are rebuildable in a kit. And in the kit, you'll get um, that guy. You will get this guy right here. And there internally is going to be a little spring which returns it to its native position. Now, if you've seen, the spring was not easy to pull out. That was absolute garbage. And I believe that there's so much soot and garbage inside this, uh, oh, geez. sorry guys, there we go. Oh my goodness, it is. There's a broken coil right there. There's, there's all sorts of garbage down in there. So this right here is your piston, which rides inside the valve body. And this is your coil. So when you energize a coil, it sucks this guy in and opens the port, so now it allows flow. It allows flow from those hot holes on the side into your pilot in the middle. This here is your piston. This is your valve body. And what I think is happening is this is supposed to be a spring over spring type of uh, suspension in here. And because the springs were all jammed up, this guy here was hitting extra hard because these are also dampeners and that dampener is supposed to alleviate some of that vibration. But because it was so rigid and almost maxed out on the spring, it was allowing the piston to vibrate, which was that sound that you heard. And the vibrations mean that it's going to cause extra wear and tear on your coil because you're going to have some inertia on the coil. It's not going to want to technically move. But the dingle hopper in the middle is going to be vibrating. That extra vibrating wears away on the inside of your coil, which is what caused the problem. The extra wear and tear on the sleeve in here 
actually wore through the sleeve into the coil, and that's how it arcy sparked electrically through the sleeve. And that is the anatomy of a failure. It really came down to a bunch of muck inside the valve train, and if that was cleaned out, and if this was periodically changed out, like on steam sterilizers, there's a regular interval where we change them out. But on devices like these air compressors, we run them to fail. So if you have a buzzy valve solenoid, or if you hear a solenoid that's not quite activating or it's not releasing, that means that usually the piston's gummed up, it's jammed up, and or it's vibrating because your, your dampener springs are being affected. So it's just a part that needs to be changed out. I will check some of these other solenoids out just to be sure that they're also running clean. But it just goes to show you guys, we can get parts for these, we can rebuild them, and they are pretty common parts. So that's the anatomy of a failure, a solenoid valve. Thanks for watching, guys.